That's okay. You want to tune my game, my my down? Take my got my game down a little bit, cause I'm hello loud. Wait, make, make myself. This is getting edited down, right? Oh yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Okay. Oh my god, my nose just started itching. Nose is itching. <laughs> That's definitely staying. We're keeping that. <laughs> Are we ready? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. I do one quick thing here because we're recording, aren't we? We are recording. <laughs> this is the thing to do when we prep up for a podcast, you guys. Especially with divas that must take a picture selfie first. Picture selfie. Welcome to Education is Painful, the podcast where you will learn. This is a Toro Strategic Production. Part of the Engine Media Group in association with Hearst Digital Media. I'm like, well, okay, you can buy cheap equipment. You can buy cheap equipment. Understand you need to treat it very delicately yeah. because, it, unfortunately, they're often cheap cheaply yeah. made, right? Um, I was going to say a non-PC thing, but we're just going to run right. with that. But yeah, no, oftentimes, recording equipment in general, you right. can do it on the cheap easily. And you could Mickey Mouse, I call it Mickey Mouse it all together. Mm -hmm. No insult intended because I, I too have a Mickey Mouse home studio, but I recently upgraded and said, you know, I'm going to bite mm -hmm. the bullet. I'm going to buy like equipment that I know I can trust that's mm -hmm. going to be good 100% of the time right. and not, oh, the, if I, you know, just because I run a podcast right. production business doesn't mean I'm the editor. Like we hire professional editors. You will know when I'm doing the editing job. <laughs> um, but it's, again, it's like, for me, it's, I love the medium. I'm learning. Right. I have nothing but profound respect for the professionals that can do it, but I too want to learn. Right. right. And you got to start. Yeah, somewhere. Right. right. Exactly. So. Which is what I'm trying to do. Right. Which brings us to the point of where well, I should probably introduce you. Since we're basically just rolling with I mean, why don't we just <laughs> We're famous in each other's minds. Famous, what? yeah. Okay. <laughs> famous in each other's minds, yeah. But you're the uh, you're the co-chair of the of the Dallas chapter of GLOW. Yep, Global, Global Leaders, Leaders Organization. Organization mm -hmm. um, you're also a co-founder of Innovation Media, if I understand correctly. Yep, yep, yep. And that's just that's just some relatively recent things. Uh, I. I love that. I love that your your resume starts with uh, twenty plus years of experience in diverse. Is it in diverse realms of technology and? and oh my media. gosh! I need to re I need to rewrite all that stuff. Too. In fact, it's funny. I was actually talking to another buddy about having him to rework his yeah. about you know on the LinkedIn right. of all things. I'm like, this reads like a resume. I go, dude, you this man. With whom I'm just going to pimp him out on everyone else's podcast too. I love sure. him death. So shout out to Rico Carubia. He was a sound engineer for Frank Sinatra, Liza oh, Minnelli. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he's done. No, I think if I remember correctly, it was, I think it was Nine Inch Nails. He's even done a couple right. shows on that. I mean, he's done uh, B52s. Right. I'm like, I'm like Rico, you're holding out on me. Why right. don't you tell? That's my genre. Yeah. Anyway, so um, I was going through his uh, LinkedIn. We're just chatting it up, and I'm like, dude, you're like the bomb diggity why are you writing a resume at your tenured experience like right. why don't you share some of your personality of who you right. are so i'm sorry i digress i got excited no, no, but uh yeah no so i don't know what i wrote on my link but i know i have to rewrite it i haven't looked at that <laughs> i haven't like updated my profile in like a while i wonder i wonder if he knows uh renee rodriguez i hesitate to say that renee taught me everything i know about sound engineering because that would he would probably be mad that I'm making him look bad. Yeah, I was going to say, like, watch what you... Like, so and so's my mentor. And they're like, uh, no. No, 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 you're not. No, you're not. <laughs> I, I, I showed you how to turn it on and turn plug it, it in. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, but, I mean, he has... he is, He's he's definitely awesome. Uh, I mean, has a similar kind of, like, all over the place. Uh, has, uh, yeah. has worked with all these amazing bands and productions. Dude, and he did Tommy. Who? Like, Pete Townsend called him and said, be my sound right. uh, yeah. designer. That's and awesome. he's like, okay. Like, that was crazy. Anyway, Rico, I love you. Okay. <laughs> so, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Like, you have these notes for me. I, I have, yeah, I have notes. Well, I have, you know, I try to prepare. Try to prepare. I may be over-preparing sometimes, but... Uh, it's okay. You know, anyway. 
So, so I'll skip over a couple of things and get right on to you host like a dozen podcasts <laughs> at the same time. I don't. I don't. I actually have I, five. I'm actually impressed that you have taken time away from recording and live podcasts to. <laughs> so, okay, here's my methodology and why I did this. Okay, so I my business is Innovation Media Enterprises, mm-hmm. and we produce podcasts okay. for clients, and we right. strategize. We could do post production. You, you point that out to me regularly. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> well, you know, I think it's so fun because I, you know, because of my tech background, all of my corporate friends were like, "What do you do? So mm-hmm. how do you make money on your podcast?" I'm like, right. "Snort my podcast. People pay me to podcast. <laughs> like, so pay me to produce their podcast." Right. Um, Which is not a small thing, as I'm discovering. No, no, it, and it takes a lot of effort and work. And we have a podcast network, so the uh, uh, Mappy Sports Podcast Network, and uh, we produce all the shows for that. Um, but. For me personally, I'm a just I just love the medium of podcasting. I'm such an mm-hmm. advocate for it. So I, in my infinite wisdom, don't do it, people. I don't recommend this unless you are an absolute masochist. <laughs> is I thought, hey, you know what? Live stream is easy because you're forced to be on, and it's like oh, only 30 minutes. I'm going to be on live stream. Yeah. Be done with it, and you're creating content. The idea behind it is let's keep the world of podcasting front and center. LinkedIn is my audience because it's all business based that I'm you know focused on. And so I thought Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I will do a live stream, and I'm easy gonna, peasy, no easy problem. peasy, and I'm going to work with people that sure. you know different topics. And let me tell you, it is so much fun <laughs> that it's worth it. Is it easy? Of course not. I though I counsel so many different clients, and I myself don't even listen to myself listen half to the time, you know. <laughs> but 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 that being said, is I've had my little you know mm-hmm. write your pros and cons, and you work it out, and yeah. Right. So Monday's live stream is. To Deer in the Headlights, mm-hmm. and that is all about with my uh, co-host, J.D. Gershbein, uh, out of Chicago, and we just connected over the pandemic in a networking okay. group, and okay. he and I just totally had fun riffing. That man, um, he does improv, right? Um, and okay. he um, he's with the Second City guys out there, oh, right? Wow. So it's like, okay, I mean... To like, me, that's and, very impressive. Right! So like... I'm not worthy. <laughs> I'm not worthy. So we were just talking about business concepts and in general, and we're like, you know what? LinkedIn has too many live streams that, quite frankly, are too instructional. Right. Too much self-promotion. And so we decided to say, you know, what if we just kicked off a Monday morning, you know, fun show that has business concepts. Right. But it's fun. But it's fun. Like, yeah. it's, it's just conversational in a way. For lack of a better term, and I, I know he, he JD is going to cringe when I say this, but <laughs> like a morning zoo kind of thing where you're just going to talk <laughs> about things. Yeah. And yeah, there'll be business concepts because that's our audience, but but it's like a, something to set you off, something to think about. Mm-hmm. We want you to hashtag think about something, especially for those that don't know how to create content or not used to it mm-hmm. or don't understand social media. Right. So we thought, you know what, here, we're going to give you some little nuggets, have fun, mm-hmm. and then let's see what happens. And then Wednesday, because I produce so many podcasts. Mm-hmm. I got tired of just posting, so I was like, you know, I'm just going to do a video and talk about people's podcasts. <laughs> Easier. Yeah. I don't have to write it. And then, obviously, Afterglow, which you've been a guest right. on, which I think Joseph Barasanti has not subtly he, he, he was suggested that you should be a host. With, uh, he was on with me. Not, he hasn't been on individually. Yes, yes. Has he? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, me and him and uh, Aaron alone. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh, many times. Yeah, no, but, yeah, he's petitioning. I think he's, like, under kind of, like... Let's get. Let's him be a, a host, co-host. Yeah. Be prepared. Okay. Sounds good. I don't mind being replaced. <laughs> I'm not are threatened you, by are you, you. Are you ready to back off on one? Oh, no. Those? I'll just be in the little. It, it, I'll put it is. It's corner. really. It's so rewarding. Like the, the 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 whole thing. It's so much work. It's way. That's what I. You know, I started. I thought this is gonna be fun. It is fun. And it is. It's tremendously, tremendously fun and rewarding. And, you know, you get to talk to people about these these interesting subjects, uh, some of which are sometimes podcasts. <laughs> but, uh, so it's like a meta conversation. But it's, but it's a lot of work too. Like if you're doing it, if you're trying to do a good job with it, like anything, anything that's worth doing, it's going to be a lot of work. That is true. So the other two podcasts I do, I don't really advertise as much and I probably should. Sorry, mm-hmm. Airgap, sponsor. Um, it is actually around security, which I think right. people don't know as much about me. My background is in technology mm-hmm. and network security and uh, all that good stuff. So 
those two podcasts require mm. me to really do a lot of research right. because, I mean, it's security. And, yeah, well, you it's, know. yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a topical. So right. you kind of have to go into a little bit of deeper. Well, and you have to understand technically, right? I mean, ransomware specifically, right. the ransomware battleground podcast. You know, it's specifically around ransomware. It's mm -hmm. not just cybersecurity right. so in general. It's, yeah, it's a it's, it's a it's a really deep dive. Yeah, yeah. I've, and it's, I've, I've teamed in for those. It's it's very specific on those topics, and I'm not a I'm not an expert, right. but I know enough to be dangerous to engage in the conversation mm -hmm. with those. And then CISO Diaries, which hasn't quite launched, it, which is in I'm in editing mode right now. Again, that you'll know that's a professional versus not, but it's my <laughs> own personal pet project. And it's about the leadership within cybersecurity. Okay. Because I think if you look at career paths in general, even with podcasting, I think right. is equivalent. There's no career path per se that's yeah. structured to get someone to an executive leadership level right. seat at the C-suite. So that's what, um, those are my five podcasts. So Nice. And that's, those, those are ones that you actually appear on. Mm -hmm. Those are ones. Not even remotely touching the number that you've been producing. No. Those are my own personal, like, right. well, Eric App does sponsor the Ransomware right. Battleground. Right. Um, Cyber Future Foundation uh, sponsors CISO Diaries, which is, mm -hmm. again, it's in the works. The other three uh, are not sponsored per se, but right. it's, uh, again, projects where I thought would be relevant for the podcast industry okay. and then for my own personal brand. Right. Right. And to torture you every Friday when I'm like, <laughs> can be on oh, my God, it's Friday. I need help. Can afterglow. you be? Be yeah. on Afterglow. Well, that, that, that actually really, really cuts right on into the heart of, one of the things that, that I wanted to bring you on and talk about, uh, which is something that we've maybe kicked around as an idea a couple of times, which is that like, is podcast? Can we make the case that podcasting is is a new oral history? Yes. Oh, so, hundo. So for the people who don't have an anthropology background <laughs> or whatever. Um, you know, oral history is is the idea that you you know people communicate by telling stories, mm -hmm. and in you know 120,000 years ago, up until about 100 years ago, the main way that people communicated those stories was from from memory, person to person, or person to group of people, uh, which is still a very powerful way of communicating. Oh yeah, think about that visual of a campfire, mm -hmm. right? where they would, uh, you know, the Native American Indians here in America, and I'm sure mm -hmm. everywhere else, and other cultures, like they would sing, right? Yep. Like they would sing it in order for us to remember the yep. stories and remember the words. And right. and, and I, that tradition of oral history, it, I think it's a, it, it's, it's going by the wayside in a, in a lot of ways in cultures, that, yes. right, that are struggling to maintain, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I think technology is now an, enabling that resurgence to right. bring it back. To bring back those stories that, again, we've all had our unique experiences mm -hmm. and sharing. I mean, I, I can't wait to see all the creative output from the pandemic, right? right. There's a lot of struggles going on with that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, absolutely. But um, I, I survived the pandemic. I survived the pandemic. And all you have the t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I will make the, make the I survived COVID t-shirt. I think we should. I think we should. We should do it right now. I'm actually, shockingly, I don't think I've seen anything like that. But no, like what? But you know, when anytime you're embarking on a business or even your own podcast, there's always a why. Why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. And for me, the reason why I launched, you know, Innovation Media Enterprises, my uh, partner Aaron Greger, was I was downtime. I left uh, my previous tech world and I took a year and a half traveling, and I realized, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I picked up this habit of uh, doing genealogy. Oh, wow. Okay. That's and I did my uh, boyfriend's genealogy, and um, what happened was literally right around great-grandparents, it's not even that far back, mm -hmm. they just become birth dates and death dates. Yep. That's true. And and you just start looking at their life and like, oh, they did the census and whatever, mm -hmm. right? And you can kind of like go through the old school way. And I realized we're so much more than that. We mm -hmm. did not come here out of like, you know, surprise. Like, right. we come from a long line of people who've loved, cried. Mm -hmm sang together, you know, told stories together, and that's what compelled and, and me. And at some point either made the decision to pick up and leave everything they knew or got kicked out of some. I mean, oh, I can tell you about my father. Uh, he, yeah. Oh, I don't know if I should tell that story, but, yeah, my father uh, started a school of engineering, if you will, back in Thailand, and he mm -hmm. got kicked out. And not only did he get kicked out, allegedly, 
<laughs> allegedly. The story goes. The story goes uh, that they tried to off him. So he's got right. this like huge scar oh, like wow. on his arm and stuff. Yeah. And there's like pictures of my father at the, at the school that they started. It's now defunct, long defunct. But right. um, but yeah, allegedly they tried to off my dad. And that's one of the biggest reasons why my dad came over in the 50s and uh, became a strawberry picker because he was a, an immigrant. Right. And so, yeah, I love my dad's. Like, my dad's got that yeah. incredible story. And how do you go from a strawberry picker to a um, top secret, uh, what's that word? Uh, certified, uh, uh, your top secret certified, what the heck? You get that level of clearance. Secret. Top secret clearance yeah. at Los Alamos National Labs. Like, how does one do that? Like, and that to me was an oh, eye opener. I want to help people take those stories and right. document it. And that's what the podcast kind of business kind of came out from. Yeah, I, I actually did some genealogy a, a few years back and discovered, it wasn't a huge surprise to discover the relationship because they're this guy's, you know, one of the big families in South Mississippi. Did. So it wasn't a big surprise. Found out that we were related. But uh, one of the people who came over in, I, I think it's the 1600s. Wow. Um, was uh, Christian de Ladnier, uh, oh. which is the forefather of the Ladners and Ladners uh, that are all over South Mississippi and, and South Louisiana and South Alabama. Uh, and he came over on this ship, and, and the family now is is huge, and most of them, you know, own property and have, you know, cows and whatever. And, big businesses that are attached to that name so they you know they kind of we trace our roots back to this guy well in our research we discovered that uh he came over on a on a ship and he you know you can't find anything before that the first the first mention of this guy is is on the ship that uh, has a, a registry that is full of horse thieves Oh, <laughs> cattle robbers. So he's a penal and, colony person. Like. Now his his name is is blank beside it. So we don't know if he he went back with some whiteout and <laughs> cleaned up the reputation or, or you know did some early reputation management there. <laughs> or, or he could have been a, like a, a supervisor person. Like he been, could have been an employee of the boat, like to manage the boat. Well, because I because I. Because I thought it made a good story, uh, I wanted to see. You know, is maybe, uh, but those those people were listed separately, so they they had they had a oh an employee roster. Yeah, they had like a crew and, and whatnot uh, that was that was on a separate roster. So, but but there were a lot of people on there who didn't have a, you know, who, who didn't have something a crime out beside their name. So you know, maybe maybe not. But it's an interesting, it makes a good story. I mean, I'm just going to go on record. I don't think Whiteout existed back then. So <laughs> if there's something written, there'd be something documented there. But okay, I'm not going to judge. I'm not going to judge. I mean, yeah, with no, the, that's. With his little fountain thing. But that would be actually fascinating. If, I, I, maybe I just watched too much genealogy TV because, like I said, I got really into mm -hmm. it. Um, I would probably suggest going to the historical society or group over mm -hmm. there and just say, help me understand why is. Why would an entry like this be blank? I bet right. you there'll be a historian that could probably tell you yeah. a story behind that. I guarantee you there's somebody there who will uh, tell you a story about it. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> it, may not, it may not be 100% accurate historically, but I guarantee you there's a story that will be told. Yeah, but if you could get something like, and I think we talked <laughs> about the pull podcasting medium in general, is, is evoke an emotion. Right. If you mm -hmm. can evoke some kind of emotion to tie back to the story that someone can relate to their own lives, mm -hmm. I think that's where the magical formula is. Right. So right. whatever you discover on that line, and even if it's true or not, if we want to believe it's true, I bet you, and someone <laughs> resonates with it, they're going right. to remember it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, and that's that's so. You had mentioned earlier uh, that that people tell the story and kind of tell their and, and put their own spin on it. Uh, a lot of times, and even even those, you know, in the context of oral history, when people would tell and retell yeah. these stories, uh, a lot of times things would, you know, bits and pieces would get dropped, get or dropped, embellished. or added, or <laughs> yeah. embellished, or, mm -hmm. or mixed, uh, and you know, and you can see, you know, looking at, at folklore uh, of storytelling, you can you can see that there's there's 
these weavings of bits and pieces of stories that cross over and you know some of them go back you know just centuries and centuries of, yeah. you know, of history if not if not millennia of history i think cinderella is like a perfect example of that it's, it's story an excellent right? example like like now we think of like the disney version basically oh it's, don't it's, get me that's started the, that's the only version that eva really thinks about but but cinderella the story existed long before that and uh and didn't always have the same outcomes. And so. No, 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 no. I mean, like, I think, uh, I know the Chinese have a, ver a version mm -hmm. similar. Yeah. I think in La the South America, I think, South America. Um, the, I don't know, I don't know what civilization had it, but yeah, something I similar. I mean, everything in Europe, similar, something right. crossover somewhere. I think Native American have a sim similar. It, I think the basis of it is the same, right? Because I think right. it's called human condition. Yeah. And I yeah. think that we can all relate to it right. right and we have the same pain points going back to we all laugh we cry we sing together right and and well and and in this you know in the context of of i guess still of podcasting as as a as an oral tradition of storytelling or whatever we want to call it the fact that you're telling the same story uh you know that you that, that someone else is talking about a scene you know Somebody else is talking about ransomware because I'm sure there is. I, I, I know there is. What do you What do you mean by talking about ransomware? <laughs> it is It is a word we do not speak of, especially if your name is Colonial Pipeline Solar Winds. <laughs> or yeah. Well, <laughs> Sorry. you know, somebody has a podcast that's talking about the same thing that you are maybe thinking about uh, doing your podcast on. I don't think that that is necessarily a reason for you not to do it. Oh my gosh! I think you. I think everyone has a unique voice. Yep and a unique set of experiences that you bring to bear on whatever the story is. Absolutely. And, and, there's, and there's value in that. Now, you know, are you going to be a, a Joe Rogan rich dude as a result of it? Probably not. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't tell your story. Absolutely. So I, I've, said, I've said this to us. I'm probably going to sound like a broken Now I fully understand why people keep saying, like, be a good guest because – you know, don't say something different each time. But the truth is this. So I think I think I Googled it the other day. They estimate over 75 mm -hmm. million books have been published over the course of right. uh, human documentation time, whatever you want to call it. And yet there are still books getting published today. There are still book authors, right? right. Because Absolutely. everyone's got to start. Well, same thing with podcasting. Well, there's 800,000 podcasts mm -hmm. out there. Well, you know what? Actually, how many are active? Right. And by the way, is any of them, any are any of them your name or any of them of, mm -hmm. of you? No. Your so, your group, your people. Your interests. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is a lock for every key. Yeah. I am a hundred percent believer in that. And I think the biggest roadblock to anyone's success on life in general, and I love extrapolating podcasting little idioms to life in general, but it's true. The only thing that we are competing against in life is ourselves and not mm -hmm. doing anything. So it's the it's that uh, lack of effort is what's killing us to have our mm -hmm. own voice, to put ourselves out there, to do yeah. social media, do our own content creation. That is our biggest competition within anything. It's not another podcaster. Right. You have a podcast. I have a podcast. Right. You're in a studio that, you know, is not my studio. Right. But do I? Th am I threatened? No. <laughs> the idea of it. No. But what's well, the whole point? <laughs> well, are you threatening me? No, but like, think about it. Like, there's there's room. Yeah. There's always room for mm -hmm. growth. There's, to me, it's a bigger party, and all rise, all ships rise with the tide. Right. If we can get the podcast medium in a way that becomes a standard and it is normal, and it's you can monetize it. There's some real mm -hmm. big business and money and investment in it. You can monetize it. Yeah. Then all of us rise together. So Joe Rogan does does not matter if you love Joe Rogan or not. If you agree with them, I don't care about that. Right. What I'm saying is, is Joe Rogan, we use him as an example, is he has shown that there is big money in mm -hmm. podcasting. Right. And that there are other businesses that are willing to invest into a podcast for others. And, and, and I see it time and time again. Just ask. And, and that's not even necessarily the only way to monetize mm -hmm. Podcast. Nope. There's I mean, sponsorship is, is great, and uh, I certainly appreciate our sponsors of one sort or another. We're never saying no to sponsorship. <laughs> We're going to say no to the sponsorship. Let me just clarify. <laughs> but 
<laughs> but that's not the only that's not the only thing that, that uh, a podcast does for you. If you are you know if you are in a business, uh, some of our some of our mutual uh, friends and acquaintances have podcasts that are that support their their business mm-hmm. in one form or another. Absolutely. I mean, okay, so podcast is not just an ad. And I and I, and I think to some degree, yeah, I, I'm shocked I still have to even say that, right? right? Like, but it's okay. It's not to diminish for those that think. <laughs> I, I think if you, if you go into the into a podcast studio with the idea that you're going to do a 15, 30, 30 an hour. hour long ad for whatever you're, you're shilling, uh, you just have listened to a podcast. <laughs> That's very hard. Uh, there, Especially not one that was done that way. Well, I, I think, okay, it's so pretty awful. I 100% agree. I think uh, you, you, the world of podcasting exists because the way we look at marketing mm-hmm. and the way we engage in a social media culture mm-hmm. has evolved. The traditional way to market, though it absolutely still needs to be done, okay, mm-hmm. the billboards, the print ads, the traditional radio, you know, terrestrial radio type mm-hmm. slots and all that stuff, 100% still needs to happen and occur. But do understand that we've evolved into a TikTok world. We've evolved mm-hmm. into an Instagram world. We've evolved into where LinkedIn is not a job site posting, I want to look for my next gig page. Right. It is very much about social interaction. Mm-hmm. It is all about engagement and community building. It's all about brand awareness okay. and brand identity. Right. And so that is where podcasting fits in so many different ways and it's applied in so many different ways so I, I cringe a little bit when I do talk to some of my clients and potential uh, prospects where they're like well I just only want to talk about my product and you're like okay we can't you're the only one who does that <laughs> but who's gonna listen to this who's your audience and you have to know who your audience is and, and it's not matter of fact that just gives me a great idea for another another guest I'd like to bring on uh, it's not that nobody wants to hear about your product. That, that's uh, I shouldn't say that, but but you can't be talking about it's yeah you can't my bumper, be, my bumper, my bumper, my bumper right. on my car on these cars, bumper, bumper. No yeah. one cares about the bumper. Like yeah. sell the story of how exactly. like that bumper maybe was in a horrendous crash. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it collapsed, but guess what? We saved you know a right. bus or right. you know what I mean like, those types of things. Tell, are, tell the story. You know, yeah. it's not it's you know. I, I know. I know. I was, I, that just made me think about a guy who's so passionate about his about his product, and and I'm and I'll just go ahead and say it. it's it's to do with with mainframe analytics. <laughs> yeah, oh, <laughs> not sexy, but and, oh, I, oh, and so, so that's it. Is, is like you, just just to say it, and, and it just sounds like okay. I am going to just leave before I fall asleep now, but when he talks about it, he has. The stories to back it up, and it's still it's maybe going to be geared towards a somewhat more technical audience, but but it, he has the stories to back up why this is interesting. He has the passion to bring it across. Yes. Uh, and you know, could anything be more boring than mainframe analytics? But I, I have spent uh, over an hour talking to him about how how that, you know, how that improves you know your business. If you're working with mainframe, yeah, and and how his product enhances that, and things that could be done to make that even better, and things like that, and and it was like, what, where did the time go? Because you've got somebody who's got a good story to tell, yep. and is passionate about telling that story, and, yep, and has put the work in to know what he's talking about, which I think is the other thing. Is there's a lot of, you know, good storytellers don't just magically appear out of thin air. I mean, some people are, I would say, naturals at it and, and do it well. They also practice constantly yes. by doing. And they're not afraid to be, to look stupid. They're not afraid to, you know, have their have their jowls jiggle when they when they Stop it. I'm trying, to, like, hide, <laughs> I'm trying to hide my double chin here. <laughs> no, you actually, I just posted on uh, a response to someone and it reminded me. So it, uh, it's actually an old uh, guest on an old podcast. I befriended him, and he just became a social media guy. Mm-hmm. Like he blew up after. I was like, "Ooh, we had you before. You're like super, like you know, social media famous." But um, he posts a lot of uplifting videos to mm-hmm. kind of like keep people inspired. And he's mm-hmm. an AI guy. 
Yeah. He's I, IBM. Um, I don't know if he still is, but he's like a, one of those like IBM think tank mm-hmm. people. Neil Sahota, shout out to you. Okay, so oh, yeah, he, yeah. he he posted this. Uh, you know, like he posts like this one video, and it just reminded me of it's a it's a blind uh, young man. I didn't even know he was heart. an AI guy. <laughs> Oh yeah. oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, hardcore with Watson, I think. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. is the, is the is those happy uplifting yeah. posts, right? Um, but that's about branding and engagement. Right. So anyway, it's this video of this uh, young man playing, and he's blind, and mm-hmm. uh, so it reminded me of this one thing. Uh, some writer uh, was interviewing uh, Prince, mm-hmm. and everyone everyone knows that Prince is an, was an amazing guitarist, right? Absolutely. But his whole thing was. Well, I know and like you know, and he, I guess he got tired, and he was special. Like he, we get it socially awkward. But someone <laughs> called him a genius or something, and he goes, "You know what? People don't realize is how many years it takes to be an overnight right. sensation." Right. <laughs> and he would get upset Absolutely. that he knew he was talented, he knew he was gifted, mm-hmm. but his whole thing was, I sat there at twelve years old with a guitar in hand, mm-hmm. and I just played for hours and hours and hours every day. And so, in a way, to call him a genius almost diminishes the hard work that he yeah. dumped into it. And same thing with podcasting or anything in general. Yeah. You've got to put the time into it mm-hmm. to put out a good product. Yeah. There are some folks that are naturals, but we're not. I'm sorry. We, I wish we could all be, but then we'd all be billionaires, right? Or would yeah. we? Or would we all increase our game? I don't know. Elevate the yeah. game. I don't know. So, so David Wong that, that writes for Cracked Magazine and has written some books he tells a story about a guy who does a coin trick. Mm-hmm. You know, just a basic, you know, here's the coin, I'm going to make it disappear. Silly little coin trick, right? And everybody who sees it, even professional magici- magicians who see it, are just amazed at how good this coin trick is. And he says, then, but the guy told me the secret to it. And the secret was, while you were out uh, on dates on Friday nights in high school, I was at home practicing this card trick, coin trick. While everybody else was going out and, and partying mm-hmm. in college, I was in the dorm room practicing this coin trick in front of the mirror over and over and over. And I was dropping it. And I was doing it in front of friends, and they were laughing because it was stupid. And I was doing it you know, here and, and there, and, and, and people would you know, ignore it. And I would fail over and over and over again. And now, any coin, anytime, anywhere, I can do this coin trick and, and impress somebody. So the, it's not magic. It's hard work. Uh, it's still, it's still magic in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, he makes yeah, the point yeah. that, that, no, but that it's true. hard work looks like magic to people who are unwilling to put in the effort. hard work. Yeah. And uh, that, you know, that sticks with me because there's so many things that we want to do that we want it to be easy. And, and and that's fine. I'm not against doing some things the easy way. But if it's something that you care about, if it's something that, that you want that you want it to bring you joy, yeah. You are going to have to put the work work in up front. Uh fine, I'll exercise someday. Fine, I get the message. <laughs> I get it. I know I put some weight on since we last saw each other. <laughs> going to suck my gut in for the rest of the talk. That's why no. we have the table here. So. Yeah, I know. Like, that's, why, that's why I wear black. I just blend into the background. That's right. Um, Especially yeah. here. No, but that's, that, that is the one thing. I, too many people have this impression that the TikToks are too easy. Or like, oh, you're just going to sit there for 15 seconds. Oh, my gosh. The amount of effort that you, these yeah, people you do. you haven't tried it. <laughs> you haven't tried it. Yeah, exactly. You have to be witty and, and creative and, and all that creative good stuff. And, and just doing the thing is not simple and that's lesson number one i mean if you're less than 20 maybe but, but for uh, anybody for, 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 i'm mentally the t- mentality of a 12 year old <laughs> but seriously everyone that launches a podcast and starts off first off know why you're doing it because if you're not if your heart and soul is not rooted mm-hmm. into it it's just going to be a fly by night and I'll, and i've actually told clients i don't think this is for you right i don't think this i don't think this project the way you intended to be is going to be netting you the results that you're looking for. And I hate turning away business, Sure, yeah. but I'd rather turn away business and have yeah. them come back to me and go, thank you for not wasting my money. Right. <laughs> they well, could still donate and sponsor me for that. <laughs> right. Anyway, no, 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 but, but, but it, and it they, all And they may things. come back later with a better, you know. Or they refer, I actually got referral because I turned someone down, right? Um, but 
you have to know why you're doing it. Otherwise, you're not going to continue doing it. Because mm -hmm. when you wake up in the morning and you realize, oh, crap, I need to put content out, mm -hmm. that fire in the belly, your why, the true mm -hmm. why, is going to be what sustains you, and it's your right. fuel. Um, and by the way, when I ask people what is your why, I'm not asking for like, oh, I just want to create brand awareness or grow whatever. <laughs> that's not a why. That's a that's a KPI. That's your that's goal, right, right. right? Like that's what that's what you're OKR, aspiring that's, to. That's right? the one I keep having to look up now. Oh, I can I know, right? OKR. No, uh, no, no, no. It's uh, what is it? It's operation, uh, objectives, and key results. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, Jesus. That's the latest. The latest look, thing. I'm so glad I'm the out of corporate lingo. Right. God, shoot me now. <laughs> I'm going to talk about corporate paradigms just to bring it back because I think it was out of favor. And I'm kidding. No, I wouldn't torture anyone like that. But uh, I feel like I'm digressing on it a little bit. So it, did you have any like... like oh, I get, I, I've got tons of questions. What's I, the best concert that you've uh, attended ever? Let's say it. Let's go ever. Oh, there's so many. I have like 500 concert t-shirts. Yeah, okay, so I, you're a big concert. I'm a huge music file in that context. I'm not like a music file as in, mm -hmm. in 1584 <laughs> or like but you love Zeppelin the live in 1780, right. whatever, at 17, do you like that? <laughs> um, uh, best, <laughs> best Wait, favorite. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you like that? Oh, anyway. Okay, so. Best uh, concert ever. Best concert ever. I hate to say it, and this is so funny because it's not my jam, not my genre, but I was just in awe. And it left me extraordinarily just like in awe. Uh, it was Dolly Parton. Oh wow! So yeah. I am not a country music person. Talk about I, somebody who's a hard worker, like puts the hours in. Oh, uh, she Four played decades. no less than I think I said eleven. Might have had a couple glasses of wine during that show, so it was probably <laughs> closer to seven or nine. Yeah. I'm not exaggerating. That woman with her freaking. And I'm like, we we're. It was me and uh, Karen Rhodes. Love you. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we gifted each other as our birthday gifts to each other to go to this concert. Yeah. And we were like eighth row center. Oh, wow. So I got to see her. So you saw her nails. Mm -hmm. She's just playing the banjo. She's playing <laughs> this washerboard thing. She's like, I mean, yeah. guitar, electric guitar, acoustic guitar, like, uh, I mean, and piano. And I, just to me, the reason why she blew me away was the talent. Yeah. The diversity in ta like what yep. she was displaying for us, and she cared. She was so yep. authentic in the performance. She told her stories, and uh, Dolly Parton is by far a legend, and I'm so honored mm -hmm. that I got to see her perform. Now, going back to my genre, um, I'm gonna have to say Depeche Mode, um, and well, yeah, that, it's Depeche that, Mode. I don't know. Yeah, that's the date you a little bit. Sure. Wait, Dolly <laughs> but, Parton did But I did also, it. <laughs> well, Dolly Parton is such a multi-generational, multi-decade artist. That, uh, and you're saying Depeche Mode isn't? I'm just saying. Just kidding, go ahead. <laughs> well, you, you'd already, you'd already uh, uh, tricked the uh, Nine Inch Nails. So that, you know, that's another one. Again. That's a good show, too. Yeah. Oh, Trent Reznor well, was not a good I'm show. I to think, uh, um, I saw... It wasn't Pearl Jam. It was in that, in that era. And I went to the I went to the concert to see the opener, and stayed for the full concert because the show that they put on was just so amazing. That's so many concerts, right? Like so many. Yeah. I I went for suicidal tendencies. Oh, I, was, I love them. I want. Awesome. Oh, wait, wait, no, that's not. Uh, just want a Pepsi. Just want Pepsi. Yeah, that's it. Um and yeah. Mm -hmm. I actually drank Pepsi. I didn't even like soda as a kid, but I drank a Pepsi because I love that song so much. <laughs> it was so sweet. I'm like, yeah, I just want a Pepsi. It's so gross. Um, sorry, Pepsi. Uh, I just don't like soda like that. That's just too sweet. Um, yeah, no. I, the thing about music, and I think that's what brings it back to podcasting as well, is there's such diverse music, right? There's, well, mm -hmm. who's to say, like, why should I have another band? I, I don't want to sound, you know, I sound like everybody else. No, you don't. You're a singer, right. songwriter, or you're just performing, et cetera. The talent what? is amazing to me. Like, just watch them live. The talent and, and the, like, you get to see, well, maybe not so much anymore, but it used to be that you got to see more of their personality come through. Yes. And, you know, before they, before everybody lip synced everything, <laughs> you got oh, to see a lot auditor. more of the, uh, of the, of the real art artist and their, the effort that they put in come through. 
Yeah. I, that's why, I, like, I like I like small small venue venues. Venues for sure. Hun, hundo, small um, venue rules. Some of those because I, I did. I, I used to be. I used to be. You know how people are about the Grateful Dead. Yeah. I used to be almost that bad about Cowboy Mouth. Cowboy Mouth. Cowboy I, Cowboy Mouth is, is kind of uh, they're they're kind of locally famous around the New Orleans area. Okay. In, in that that region of the southeast, but uh, the show like. You know the music is it's, it's good. It's really good. I mean, obviously, it's not you know top forty hits, but thank goodness. Uh, but it's but no bias or anything. Their show is so energetic and like you cannot walk away from one of their shows without feeling good. I love that. I love and, that. I love that. You know, you go to you know you go to like a big uh, you know a big arena event and it loses intimacy. Loses into me. So, I mean, you still, you know, it's still energetic and it's still a good show, but like, uh, there, there used to be a, uh, I can't remember what they call it now, but it was, used to be in the old Coke factory in Hattiesburg, Mississippi that they came. It was like a two level venue. And so the main guy of Cowboy Mouth in this, you know, in this concert and they're, you know, like, like for that part of the world, they're pretty, you know, they're a relatively big band. Yeah. Band. It's got a following. And, yeah, and he's and he's out mingling through the crowd with a with a wireless mic and dragging people up to the front of the stage. Oh, how fun! And and it's just it's so much fun. It's one of those it's one of those bands like you know where they have a song where everybody's you know pulls out a, a, their like red Lighter. plastic spoons and throws spoons at them. Okay, and, that's different. I've never yeah, heard that. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's, there's all these there's all these little you know little kitschy things that come along with it. Oh, is it like a? Is it kind of like the interactions, kind of like Rocky Horror Picture Show? Kind of, kind of okay. like that. Not, not as much. Dated but, myself there but, too. Yeah, another classic. But uh, mm. yeah, so yeah, I knew you were into the um, music. Makes the world go around. I think um, again, podcasting makes the life go around mm -hmm. as well in a different way, right? right. So. Well, you mentioned you mentioned you, you know people don't start a band like if you're going to start a band you don't say well there's another band you know, sings the same kind of music or whatever. Um, but I, it just made me think, like, I wonder, how many people start a band because they want to be the only person who plays that genre of music? I mean, you wouldn't, you wouldn't. I don't think, well, first off, artists don't think that way. Exactly. Right? Like, the brain doesn't exactly. think that, they're like a totally different brain function. I think, uh, um, like, if you, th if you just, if you logic it, it mm -hmm. doesn't, like compute for like right. the logic branded minds or mm -hmm. even the artistic. I mean, logically you could say, yeah, okay. The genre is this, right. Mm -hmm. But for a creative mind, I think it's simply, Hey, I like this sound and mm -hmm. I like that beat. And I like that harmony and I like that rhythm. And let me just pull it together in a way that that is uniquely them. And if it creates a whole new genre, great, more power to you. Right. right? Um, or if it creates a movement, right. You know, um, let me ask you this question. Okay. Have you ever <laughs> <That's right. laughs> have you ever listened to a song that just teared you up a little bit or choked you oh, up yeah. a little bit? Yeah. I'm not gonna Dang it, y'all was gonna ask you next one. <laughs> Why do you no share? Um what's the uh that, that... Oh my god, was that offensive? Sorry. Was it? Okay. <laughs> we're just gonna we're just gonna Yeah, no, the um Total Eclipse of the Heart by Bonnie Tyler. Oh my God! That's it. That gets me every time. My girlfriend <laughs> and I don't and even I... know why because I have, I don't have a big breakup story or anything like that. It's just, it's just a. Oh my God, that's so funny. Um, we sing that's that for karaoke. It's a terrible song too. Oh, it's so bombastic. It's so right. over the it's top. It's so but over was, the top. But it's. I mean, uh, but that whole genre, that time period, like meat loaf, that's like true. <laughs> like was so like raw, and I'm like, oh yeah. my God, like oh, for your own um, but, so extra. So I mean, if if that term existed back then, it would absolutely be extra. But that's I, 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 it is that was a function of the time, true. Uh, but <laughs> but then there are also some people who are, who that is sort of their thing, and 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 they're good with it. Like you know, that, just go with it. Like that's that's my that's my jam. Being being a little over the top. Um, I, yeah, I, I agree. I think I think uh, that people who people who start a band, the musicians, let's say, uh, people who I would who I would 
broadly classify as, as real musicians. Like I'm a dabbler. I play now on the guitar, but I'm terrible. Oh. And I'm always going to be terrible because I'm not committed enough to that. To it to hurts. Good. I'm sorry, people. I have a guitar. I've I, had yeah, it for 20 like odd it, years. Yeah, it literally hurts. It physically hurts. I mean, like it literally hurts. I mean, but but that's that's your why, your passion, right. your like. We don't have that why enough right. in us to do what Prince did. Right. Exactly. And that's and it's right. okay. And so and it's the, okay if you don't. The people who I know who who are musicians like, and they're not necessarily. Like, that's not necessarily their source of income. That's not necessarily what they do all the time. One of them's a sales, IT sales guy. Yeah. You know, one of them's a preacher. One of them, one of them actually is a musician. But he doesn't get to play what he wants to play all the time. Right. But they, they're, they're doing that, and they're finding a way to express that somewhere, somehow. It's like you said, it's going to come out. Like, it's going to boil over and come out somewhere. Yeah, you're right. You're right, but I do think uh, when you have uh, that performance uh, and podcasting, same, same, we're going to mm -hmm. have the same adrenaline rush at the very end. There's something <laughs> to be said about, you know, the, the, the endorphins that run mm -hmm. through your system when you're doing a podcast, when you're doing a live stream, when you're doing, uh, you know, obviously a concert performance mm -hmm. or something like, or a speech or a webinar or whatever have you, right? Yeah. Well, There's this rush of, uh, of endorphins that just gives you that high mm -hmm. and that too is another why. I kind of a like a endorphin I, junkie. I, I, I enjoy no, I think, that I feeling. Think that's, I think that's legit why we do anything, really. I mean, because that's what happens. That is that is the reward function. That is how I justify chocolate when I'm in the mood <laughs> for it. <laughs> well, I don't know. That Maybe that's not... Uh, Back off. Back off. Maybe that's not the most... Uh, Back off. <laughs> Leave I'll, it at although, that. <laughs> although, I, you know, I also know some people who are... Passionate that way about making chocolate. They they oh make they, they make chocolate. I think I'm in the mood for chocolate right now. Okay. I know, right? Who said that? <laughs> it doesn't take much. I'm actually a fruit person. So oh, if really? I'm in the mood for chocolate, it's mm -hmm. like So what do you what do you like with your chocolate? how do you pair your chocolate with your fruit? <laughs> oh, red wine. Oh yeah, no, 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 no. So um <laughs> Well, there goes that question. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Segue, next topic. Uh no, I do like uh, when I was in uh, Europe, I, I, I couldn't believe mm -hmm. how good the chocolate tasted there. Right. And I was like, like drooling a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love it. It's so different. It's not too sweet either. And, mm -hmm. I, and I think that's something that's different. I think American confectionery taste buds is very sugar heavy. Mm -hmm. um, and so I do, when I think of chocolate, I just think of like when I was in Paris and I just kind of bit down mm -hmm. and I just like, it's a gorgeous truffle. Yeah. And by the way, gorgeous is the right word for it. Right, right. It's so beautiful. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's what my wife took me to Angelina's, which has the hot chocolate. Ooh. And That's Mexican chocolate, right? Um, No, this is in, in Paris. Oh, oh, you were? Oh, okay. Yeah. And yeah, she's, from, she's from Paris. And, and so they, they have this little place there that has, like the, like, the world's most expensive hot chocolate, maybe. I don't know. Oh, po, 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 But it's po, super expensive. Do, it's, it's almost, it's not a pot. Yeah, okay. But it's, which I'm mangling. <laughs> She'll kill me. I know. That's what I'm like. But, I'm like, pulled. But, uh, sorry. But it's, it's a, yeah, it's almost, it's a hot chocolate. I mean, it's, it's got, so it's good. got some milk in it and it's got some, it's got a little bit of milk. But it, yeah, it's so good. And I don't, I don't, I don't know what the secret is. That's not my, not my area of expertise. Uh, uh, although maybe I the can, milk. Maybe I'm I wondering if it's the milk. In. Uh, probably. I mean, I think oh, I think yeah. you're I think you're right in the the sweet. You know, one of the things that once you get hold of good chocolate for a while, um, we brought we brought some back from uh, we brought some back from uh, the South Pacific. It was also really good. But what you start noticing different is like there's not as much chocolate. Like, yeah. Come on. Yeah. Like and I said, it's it's. It's creamier. There's a lot, yeah. There's a lot more filler and a lot and a lot of sugar or whatever sweetener, but not as much chocolate. And you know, letting that chocolate flavor come through, I think, you know, letting letting the chocolate be chocolate instead of trying to make it be super sweet oh my gosh. stuff. That just reminds me. It's almost like let your podcast just be a podcast and not overthink it and not over. Yeah. 
objectify what you want. It's amazing how we managed to bring everything back to <laughs> back to podcasts. So I, um, I I do well. You know, I, like I said, it's a legacy buildup for me. I'm not. I don't have children, mm -hmm. and for me, it's like you know what. I don't have quote you know I won't have a physical thing carrying me my name right. on but and, and I know you know if you look in the genealogy I'm just gonna be boop tree stops done right. and I'll just be a name and done and then I'm just gonna continue on the line and all that but if I could just leave that one opportunity of my personality and then see a video of me and hear my per like my voice mm -hmm. and they're like oh wow she sounds like a dude okay <laughs> all right well I didn't I didn't imagine well. that okay you know um, you know but. It's just those little things in like, right. you know, and the way you think. I mean, there's so much benefit outside of your actual purpose of a podcast that I think yeah. has more you know, meaning to it, mm -hmm. you know, bigger picture. But. Yeah, well, it's, it, it's, it's a, I mean, it's an oral history. It gets, it gets to, it gets right to the heart of, of what makes people interesting and unique. And as a, as a, uh, as a uh, polymath, technologist, anthropologist, terrible guitarist, um, you know that that the oral his history aspect of it, and the, you know just the essentially you know what makes us interesting uh, aspect of it to me is is just fascinating. I, I'm not addicted <laughs> to podcasts. Um, uh, by the way, I <clears throat> I have been coached that that is a word that probably should take out of vernacular because there is a real real sickness right and addiction in general so i don't want to minimize um, yeah. the addiction and there are there's very real true, uh, true. challenges true, true. but i but do not, i definitely have a habit formed. <laughs> I, I well it's fun it is so you can't once uh, well, you're into it even, it can be not fun not even just not just now you just uh like obviously as you have called me out on many times i love to talk <laughs> and it's not just the hosting it's not or have just an opinion the, yes <laughs> um but if you're if you don't have an opinion what makes you interesting? Well, okay, that that is true. That is true. But I have to say, selfishly, but even for just me, listening. Well, that's the whole point. Like that's what I love about the production side of it for me. Mm -hmm. Is yes, I have my own podcast and I have mm -hmm. my own shows and all that and topics of interest. But when I'm producing for other clients and I'm mm -hmm. listening to their shows, can I just tell you, it's like a free master class. Absolutely. And there are some very high profile guests right. that I've been able to be lit a lit literal. A literal fly on the wall mm -hmm. and listening to these individuals talk and it is such a privilege I feel that I get to listen to it and, um, and I hope that's what most audience members will think about when they're listening to a podcast as well right, right? like just being in that moment with these people in a conversation and like you're with them you're with them in that moment yeah <laughs> it is though that that's one of the that's one of the one of the benefits of whether you're just listening to podcasts or, or hosting or guesting or whatever is the, the exchange of ideas that can happen in a setting that is not um, not necessarily so formal, I guess, as, as, you know, it's not like a classroom. It's not like a boardroom. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a, it's a much more open exchange, I think, or can be. It can be. I mean, I've seen some podcasts where it's very proper, mm -hmm. right? Like, here's your 10 questions, <laughs> and we ain't going to dive. We are not moving yeah. away from this. We are, boop. Yeah, speaking of which, I've got like 14 more questions. <laughs> not really. Any good? Anyone that's interesting? Uh, that well, you, you know, it's interesting. You know, we, we talked about concerts and music. Uh, you mentioned that, uh, that the oral history, bring it back to oral history and podcasts, you had mentioned the the that people used to sing these these things. Yes. And uh, I understand. I, I I picked up from somewhere that you have been known to sing to your dog. <laughs> Absolutely do. <laughs> oh, what do you what do you sing to your dog? Oh my gosh, I am. I should have been the next like I don't know Rogers Hammerstein like <laughs> best lyricist ever. What, what, what's it, Bernie, like... Uh, Bernie Taupin? Uh, yeah, I'm the next Bernie Taupin in my own mind. Right. And uh, I sing <laughs> about as well as no one that I just mentioned there. Uh, no <laughs> well, Elton John, no. Um, yeah. I was going to say, Bernie doesn't sing. So. Yeah, no. No, no, no. So I do sing to my dogs, and uh, they they are the only people in the world that... Uh, well, they do judge me. I've actually seen... <laughs> 
<laughs> I've seen my dog walk away from me. <laughs> no, it's, no, it's okay if your cat judges you because that's what cats do. Oh, no, yeah. no. But my dog, one of them's a Jack Russell, so he's kind <laughs> he's of part cat. Uh, but, yeah, no, I love... I, music makes the world go round. Mm. And to me, if there's a song in your heart mm. and there's a thought in your mind, sing it. Sure. And so I do. And I sing the most nonsensical songs <laughs> to my dogs, uh, especially in the shower. Because right. my dog likes to sit like right outside. Yeah. Well, so that's I where just... the acoustics are the best. The shower oh. is always the best acoustic. Oh, absolutely. Somebody um, should do a podcast from, from the shower. They need a big shower. I don't have a shower. Either. You don't need a big shower. You just need someone to just record yourself and have the kahoot chutzpah to do it. Like, well, I didn't mean you. You don't have to be. You don't have to be like. I should let's do it. Oh, you mean just sing in the shower? No, those people have done that. No, I'm saying sing I'm in the saying shower. Podcast okay, in the shower. look, I have had my most brilliant ideas while I'm washing my hair. Right. Like to the point where I've actually thought about I need to put like a whiteboard up yeah. just to write my ideas yeah. down. Um, and then I, I take I literally take my phone into the shower with me. You have said that. <laughs> you? I'm like, do I ask? Do I, is this a line of question I want to go yeah, down with you, you or not? But no, one day I think that. I don't know. So, <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I because because that's my you know my recording device, my paper, my. I get monitors, that, but and and it's allegedly waterproof. So far, so good. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think, uh, you know, do what makes you happy in life to me. <laughs> the fellow's taking your phone to the shower with you. It's apparently you taking your phone to the shower. Me, I'm just singing to my dog. I don't right. know. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no. I so. don't have a dog. I have a cat. She judges me. <laughs> I mean, she judges me anyway. So it's, I was just going to say, like, I don't think it's anything different, but go ahead. No, I think cats are beautiful babies. Yeah. No, I, I, I've, I've always been a cat person for whatever reason. Mm. I like it. I like a nice dog, but uh, yeah, I just I like cats because you know, uh, they go away. <laughs> I, you know, I like you because you go away. Yeah. You are a cat person. Okay, <laughs> got it. Got it. Done. There's cat, cat people get it. <laughs> no, oh no, dog people get it too. We understand our place. We got it. I know I'm an Odie. You're a Garfield. I got it. I catch you with your pitching. I think I think that is a that is a quintessential difference between cat people and dog people too because cat people would be like, like what are you trying to say? <laughs> More like what are you doing? Like, <laughs> no. <laughs> are you even talking? to me? Yeah. Why are you looking at me? Like, go. Did I allow you? Did I ask you to talk to me? No. Right. Yeah. No. <laughs> oh. See, what other random tidbits did you get out of me? Um. Oh yeah, my big, my big, uh, my my trademark question, at least for until I come up with a new one. Okay. Um, so so I you know one of the one of the questions that I ask is is uh, you know how would you fix some specific subject? But we already talked about about monetization and what's good and what's what's not so good there. So um, you know, we'll skip that one. Well, I mean, wait, look, let's let's talk about that though. Okay. People when they come up to me expect to get money. Instantly, in some capacity, oh, yeah, when right. they podcast, right? Or I'm going to yeah, make money, whatever. And it's like, okay, look, good luck with that, yes. Mm -hmm. But there are ways to go about it mm -hmm. that I don't think people really consider, right? So, mm -hmm. yes, there's a Patreon route where sure. you put it up there and just, sure. you know, and, I mean, there's and, a four fans that, only, whatever, yeah. methodology, right? right? Uh, and, and I'll say again, good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, but there's other ways. Like, okay, so now that we're entering the post pandemic back to life, but not back to normal, but mm -hmm. back to life. Um, do an event. Mm -hmm. You'd okay. be surprised where organizations may not be able to, quote, give you money as a podcast sponsor, right. but they might give you money as a event sponsor. Mm -hmm. It is a little bit harder to get that continuous run unless you mm -hmm. actually say, okay, I'm going to do X number of shows, uh, live, mm -hmm. live uh, events, whatever. Can you sponsor X and then make it a package? Like, there mm -hmm. are other ways to be creative about it. Yeah, okay. And then also, I'm shocked, and I'm guilty of it myself when I just get bogged down and stuff, because we produce podcasts. We mm -hmm. do not find sponsorship for our clients. Right. But I will give advice on what I've just seen, and it's just ask. Right. Much like right. podcasting, just try, just ask. Right. You'd be shocked that Billy's Pizza might be interested in sponsoring you because mm -hmm. your show is about, you know, 
the joys of cannabis. Mm -hmm. Like there are tie-ins that are outside the realm of what you think and would they, be. Yeah, and and what somebody, what some company is willing to sponsor, what the marketing department of some company is going to put money towards, especially when you consider how what the budget size for some of those is. You never know until you ask. Until you ask. And and then it's not just, and there's different ways about it. It's not just pure sponsorship. It could mm -hmm. be maybe they do brand sponsorship in the context of ads, right? Mm -hmm. In the traditional, this is where the combination right. comes in, mm -hmm. where you have your pre-roll, mid-roll, you know, an outro yeah. and all that stuff. So there are definitely, you can engage in the more traditional route, which is, okay, for every thousand downloads, pay X thousand dollars, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. To me, that's a lot of math. <laughs> that I think is hard work yeah. and I know of some great companies um, that do it and mm -hmm. I would highly recommend them to go that route because they master that. Um, there's also the straight up like, hey look, tech people, uh, you know, look at your marketing development funds. All businesses have mm -hmm. MDF set aside right. for these types of things. Leverage that as your marketing, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, and then again, it's just relationships. So much is all about relationships, which is, Maybe it's just they like you. Right. Maybe the monetization of it is an instant, but the sponsorship, maybe it's a quid pro quo thing of, right. hey, advertise us, and maybe we'll give you free pizzas. Right? right. And I don't know who Billy's which is, Pizza is. Which is nothing to sneeze at. Which free is, pizza. hey, I am food, mo I am food motivated. <laughs> and I'm wine motivated. Right. Okay. So yeah. That was just like a... It's an aside. <laughs> no, but that's, I mean, that's, that's true. And, you know, the, and the other thing is, you know, while you may not be, you know, we already, we did already talk about don't, don't use your podcast to just do a 40 minute commercial for whatever product. No. But if you are talking, you know, if you're in the cybersecurity industry, for example, mm -hmm. and you're doing a podcast that talks broadly about interesting subjects that establishes a certain level of you know, mastery or authoritative, uh, authoritativeness. Authority. <laughs> I'm not, not going to get I think it's the word English. authority. Yeah. Uh, but that, that, you know, that, that then turns into, you know, can be, can be leveraged into, into a, you know, not a direct revenue stream, but it, but it is a, it's indirect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there was an example of a podcast that we produced, and John Davidson, I will give you a shout out with his podcast, DLC mm -hmm. Drop Podcast. He actually uses an example because I want to give due credit because I got it from John. Mm -hmm. um, so, the world of esports, and right. we've talked about this before, is, is extraordinarily tight as a community. They're very, they're very sensitive to brands that come mm -hmm. in to Absolutely. market for them or to right. them. And uh, he mentioned that Turtle Lack did a great job mm -hmm. of integrating themselves into the esports community. Turtle wax, not an exact direct tie-in. There's no, you don't see the direct right. correlation between turtle wax and esports. Yeah. But no, what they did understand was one of the major players or streamers was a big car person, right. and he'd often okay. stream or talk about his car while mm -hmm. he was streaming or playing. And so turtle wax said, "Wait a second, this guy's well into, big in his cars, and the people following him would talk about their cars and stuff sure. like that." So they said, "Hey, this person." is a great tie-in, mm -hmm. and so they sponsored that individual. Right. And, and I think that's the way you have to get creative, mm -hmm. I think, uh, if you are looking for sponsorship. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying don't look for sponsorship, but it shouldn't be your driver to start right. a podcast. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. So that's kind of my cautionary note. But hey, if you want to give money, no one's saying no. Give <laughs> Nobody's money. saying don't give us money. No one's saying don't give us money. Right. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, no, but that's, that. yeah, that's, that's absolutely right. And, oh, uh, wow. I so I didn't I, I get so talkative. Just, Sorry. No, no, that's okay. You, you you had something there and anyway. Squirrel. Squirrel. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that that that's that's right. The the you know the don't start don't don't try to start just to get you're not that's not gonna work. <laughs> I, I get, um, anything you have to have a plan, people. Yeah, okay, you, you need a plan. You need you need to have. Uh, I mean, there's there's a lot of work that goes into it too. Mm -hmm. Like you need you need to be able to make some time somewhere to to work it in, and you know you you need to find your voice too. Like you, you what are you what are you, what are you going to talk about? 
Well, okay, yes. Now, now I'm not, I'm not saying don't talk about whatever it is you want to talk about. There is a podcast out there that is a guy who is talking about how much he loves how his electric car sounds. It's not for me. <laughs> exactly. But, but it exists. And, you know, good for him. I, yeah. Well, there's that. I, I, he, should, he should be asking Elon Musk for Tesla marketing money. No, yes. yeah. No, I'm telling you guys. It is like the, one of the other podcasts we produce, uh, he wears a hat. Right. And I go, yeah. call that hat company oh. and get get a free hat out of it. Right. And and it was interesting because he just randomly reached out and the person goes, well, we don't like do sponsorship, but maybe we'll send you a hat. Right. And I go, that's your goal. Like, yeah. And then that way, easy cross promotion. Right. It's no real big skin. I mean, it's a nice hat. I And I, and from what I understand, yeah. it's expensive. It is but a nice hat. It, and it's a Breaking Bad hat, I guess, is right. what I've been told. <laughs> right. or, yeah. But um, thanks yeah. to Breaking Bad for bringing back those. Well, it's like a is it a fedora? Is it it's not a fedora. I don't think it's it's smaller. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either. I'm waiting for the I'm waiting for the big fedora with the big dangly hat band to come back. You know what I've decided? Any of my podcasts, if you're a chocolatier and you just want me to eat your chocolate while I'm doing my <laughs> podcast, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it's yes. A product placement. Yeah. I'm going mm. to eat my chocolate. Oh, fancy this. Chocolate peppermint truffle. <laughs> Found in fine establishments. Elsa, I'm kidding. Oh my gosh, but well, you know, you know, we did, we did, um, we did get uh, uh, holy Ro holy rolly pastry shop. Oh, uh, we did get get sweet rolls, which were freaking delicious. Um, so you know, she brought us holy rolly. I'm sweet telling rolls. you, it could be something as little as that. Honestly, it yeah. is. It is. I don't know to say and, other and, than. And I would. I would totally do that again, <laughs> anytime. Well, you need to bring me back for that, or maybe I'll just be behind the scenes and I'll just like yeah. you know sample. I don't know. They're, 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 well, no, they're not all. They're most. Some of them are. I mean, obviously they're sweet rolls, but it's, yeah, they have some that are not as sweet. And uh, yeah. Well, when you're already sweet enough them. as it is, do you really need more sugar in your life? I mean, I, come I on. don't know. I've never had that problem. <laughs> 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 I, I have a terrible sweet tooth. That's, oh, do you that's, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's my that's my yeah. downfall. Oh, yeah, which is the irony that I'm sitting there saying I like chocolate. Uh, I'm a I'm a salt and vinegar. I right. if the uh, oh, if there's an opportunity for me salt and vinegar anything I'll I'll just like yeah salt and vinegar manufacturers chips pickles <laughs> yeah that, I, that, which makes me think because I'm thinking well that sounds good too uh, I don't think there's a, I don't think there's a flavor I don't really like cucumbers don't like cucumbers. Have it with some salt and pepper, a little bit of chili, and it'd be good. Uh, yeah, well, I, I, I mean, think if you have if to you eat it raw that, like that, then I was gonna say, if you if you just soak it in vinegar for a couple of weeks like that, <laughs> then that's perfect. Well, if you do cucumber and then like, what, well, what is it about cucumbers? I'm like, why don't you put like some salmon and like some cream cheese and like maybe some like uh, sun dried tomato on top? Yes. Right. You just take all that stuff off the cucumber and throw the cucumber away. It's is it the texture? Like, what is it you don't like about cucumber? I, I don't know. I think it's uh, I think it's a combination of the crunchy with the flavor. Because, like, the cucumber flavor isn't offensive. Like, uh, like tzatziki. I love that. That's good. Do you, so it's yeah, well, a combination of the texture and the flavor. I gotcha. Because I'm, I Because I like crunchy. I like crunchy things. Celery is another one. That's well, I don't like avocado necessarily, unless really? it's in a sushi roll, so it's because it's masked up. I don't like the texture. I think it's like a bland fruit, and it texture's okay, well, all weird this and mushy. Is over. And then there's guacamole. <laughs> like guacamole, I'll eat. The, I'll go oh, to yeah, town yeah, on guacamole. Guacamole. No, my God, there's a podcast on people just talking about food. You know that, right? Like, <laughs> like no, seriously, you can talk about anything. People, there's a like lock for every key, <laughs> right. dude. What do you think fetishes right. have existed forever? That's. Yeah. I mean, I'm telling you, there's a podcast for that. Oh, there's a podcast for that. There's a podcast for everything. It's, it's like, it's, I guess that's I guess that's rule thirty five. There's a podcast for everything. Absolutely. If it, if it exists, there's a podcast. There's a uh, fetish in the podcast. There's, I'm kidding. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not sorry. even not sorry, even sorry, gonna sorry, touch sorry. that. Sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, the, yeah, it, it, whatever it is. Uh, speaking of food, the World Food Competition is coming up soon. I will be in judging. Dallas. Yes. And are we, do we get to sample and partake in that? November. Well, how did you get that gig? I want that gig. 
so so oddly enough, before the before the the great shutdown, uh, my wife was working with a with a company that that did spices and, and so on, and they provided spices to uh, one or two of the contestants. Not 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 a, talking about sponsorship. This wasn't a huge you know we're gonna give money and all this, but but they get you know gave them the spices and they had their little the little logo, logo mm-hmm. sitting up there. You know, as the stuff is being filmed. Um, but anyway, so she was she was there, and she was you know, kind of kind of being salesy there at the at the event, and uh, I got to tag along a little bit, and it was so much fun. Uh, first of all, if you're into food at all, I mean, who doesn't like it? Which is good. Uh, but it was you know so so interesting to watch it, and so you're not supposed to. Sometimes you can snag a, a sample but you're not su- they're not supposed to give you the food because of health regulations and all that kind of stuff oh my god so it's oh my god so it's like what? torture <laughs> right i mean you're smelling all that and you're seeing all that and they're, you can't no, have they, any they have some they have some events that you you know where you can um, where you can sample but, Wait, but yeah. just the general competition okay you know. oh no the competition itself i right. get but i'm just saying like you can't go to a food show and not eat food <laughs> not like eat food, how, no. like what kind of like that's like hell on earth right. like seriously yeah. Pretty awful. So, so we signed up, did the training. There's training to be a food competition judge, uh, which uh, I've, I've mentioned her before on here. But uh, Donna of, of the Jelly Queen, uh, who now has a store in uh, over in Plano, not far from here, uh, was does does some of the instruction for that and did a great. You know, I mean, it was it was really interesting. We got to eat few little neat little food things and learn how to you know learn what the criteria are and you know how you know talk about how to kind of objectively look at you know like if I have a dish with cucumber in it I need to I need to not reject it just because it has cucumber in it and I just don't happen to like cucumber but appreciate it for what it is you know so it's I mean it's it's always good training for life too but you get to go and, and then uh, volunteer. Well, you don't get paid, but you know you get to eat <laughs> the food. Uh, Came back on board as a, as a judge. Yeah, I'm back on board. No, no, that sounds like a lot of fun. Oh my god, I want to hear yeah. all about that. It's yeah, I, I'm looking. I'm looking forward to it. I think it'll be. I think it'll be pretty fun. Um, one of the events is going to be on some sort of like I think maybe Food Network. Or, or I'm not sure. If oh, how fun! Oh my gosh. So I'm looking forward. I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna have to do the headband. Like that'll be. That's your thing. That's your brand. That's my, that's my and that's trademark a, now. But you know what's so whether funny? Whether I want it to be or not. Well, do you, you heard about uh, the painter guy? Like he permed his hair. Like right, Bob Ross. Yeah. Bob Ross, and yeah. then he I got known that. as that. He's like my hair is straight, but he couldn't right. not perm it. Yeah. And he hated it. I thought it was hilarious yeah, to that know was that. What, that was like in the late seventies when everybody was perming their hair. Early, well, 60, not 70. Yeah, he was all throughout the 70s, more right. or less. But, God, I love Bob Ross. Like, he was so happy trees. Happy, happy little trees. Yeah. Happy trees. Happy. But, again, you do find right. yourself a little bit in podcasting, don't you think, since you since you started and launched? Uh, you you do. I, uh, not necessarily that you find something new, I would say. Uh, but you find a you find an expression of yourself you find a, a way to you know I, like i, I kind of half jokingly called myself a polymath uh then i looked it up and found out oh that no that's exactly what i am nice <laughs> that's literally word for word the definition right. of that's uh, funny. I, I actually saw you write that i'm like oh i've not seen that word use in like yeah ever it's awesome um, and 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 that rarely would get to be expressed on just a regular on a regular day, yeah. You know, there's things that I talk about with this person, things I talk about with this this person. But, but being able to have a platform to talk with people about all these different things that I may be interested in is is not necessarily only podcasting, but that's very it's a really good platform for it for me. Yeah, because I can just ask people, you know, hey, you want to get on my podcast and talk about podcasts <laughs> well, <laughs> as I, oral history. Yeah, no, I know. I love, I mean, yeah. I just like the idea of people opening themselves up, right? right. Like I feel, 
especially now after the big break. Is that what you called it? The big break? I think it, the, the big shutdown. That's big shutdown. I kind of, kind of, ooh, kind of tired of saying pandemic, pandemic. Right. Um, again, not to diminish the pandemic, okay? I, just want to. Yeah, this is not a political statement on my part, but like a lot of people, I am just over it. I'm over it, but I'm not. I, I mean, obviously, it. I understand it. It's it's definitely but, not nothing to poo poo about, no. but it is also life does have to continue. Life has to happen. Maybe this is our generation's version of the depression, right? Where we're overcoming something that was so unique, that was so, yeah. I mean, unprecedented. Mm -hmm. uh, granted, I understand 1918 happened. I get that, you guys, but I'm talking about in a technology. Uh, Society, mm -hmm. this happened. I thought was incredible, uh, very surreal. It's yeah, it's definitely been a, a surreal experience that uh, you know, we will be looking back on and say before that, after that. But I do think going bring it back to podcasting because that's what we do <laughs> uh, is. But that is that emotional connection I was mentioning right. about that we're trying to get back into our mindset because right. for those that have isolated and truthfully uh me and my boyfriend we're like shockingly though i'm an extrovert i, I when i'm at home i am happy to be home like yeah. i'm cool oh, yeah. with I'm doing totally. nothing right um but, but I, I can i can I, when i go home you know i like to talk yeah <laughs> but when i when i when i get done you know i can i'm done read or yeah or just chill you know totally fine exactly but, uh, but I think yeah, the energy. I think our society, uh, or not society, I think human nature does have that need. Even though you might want to be, you are an introvert, and you might want to be by yourself and whatnot. Mm -hmm. There is still that human element, human right. connection, and I think that podcasts has allowed the masses to tap into a medium to broadly mm -hmm. distribute who they are, but also present themselves as authentically as they will allow themselves to share themselves to be. But that connection, it's all about that emotional connection and tie that maybe, heaven forbid, we shut down again and we get mm -hmm. locked down. At least we've got the technology to, to, to do the video calls, right. to to say I love you and you hear their voices and hear it mm -hmm. over and over again. Right. Um, not nagging, I'm just saying in a recorded <laughs> context. Well, one of the one of the things that, that I hear, hear people talk about with who are podcasters and people who listen to podcasts is, and, and so I would relay that in the form of if you're thinking about doing a podcast uh is the feeling of a personal connection yes because when you know versus a speech which is sort of canned and prepared and so on versus uh, a classroom setting or an advertiser setting where things are, are sort of you know linear and prepared uh when you're on especially like this is kind of subjective, but but what I what I think of is is the really good podcasts are very very personality driven, and you do feel like you, you feel like you know a little bit about this person that you've never met. Yeah, there is some and, there is a vulnerability that you are opening yourself a little bit absolutely. to. Absolutely, yeah, for sure. Absolutely, and and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Like that's yeah. that's you know one uh, it. You know, vulnerability can be a strength. Absolutely. Uh, for one thing, but then the other thing is that gift of vulnerability that you're giving your audience is, you know, they may not realize it when when they are uh, listening to the podcast. They, you may not think of it that way when you're doing a podcast. But that vulnerability, that, you know, that that piece of you that you're putting out there for somebody to pick up and, and take on board, is a gift that is not uh, not to be taken lightly. No, no, I agree, absolutely. Man, we went through like all these different circles of like podcasting. <laughs> like, I mean, don't get me wrong, by the way, for those that want to do like a podcast where they're drinking wine with their buddies, or I'm sorry. I might be biased. Beer or whatever, or iced tea, or Coca Cola, whatever. Uh, those absolutely still are needed. Those, like, you yeah, know, it, and, and that's what's, it could be anything. It could mm -hmm. literally be about underwater basket weaving. Mm -hmm. And I assure you, there will be people listening in because. There's, there's people. I mean, that's, you know, just the little things that I've done. Obviously, this has not been released yet, but 
but just some of the little things that I've done, I have had feedback and a guy sent me, okay, so the, we'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up after this, but a guy <laughs> sent me a video of himself uh, talking about, okay. no, 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 just, <laughs> sorry, no, just, you just, paused and I was like, I don't just, know what to uh, say to just this. Just running outdoors, no, no, no. but <laughs> But he said that I had that, that some of the things that I was doing had inspired him to, to get off the couch and uh, put some put effort into actually launching his his one of his startup ideas and things like that. And like I didn't even know that he was paying attention. Yeah. I, I mean, I I don't get individual metrics that say, you know, Fred look you know looked at your video or listened to your to your podcast. I had no idea that, that this, you know, that this person was, was paying any attention. Yeah. And that, you know, that to me, that meant so much to me to one, to hear that, but just to realize that these things that you're throwing out there into the world are, have an impact on people. Yes. As small as that audience may be, they're listening. What is it you have? A, you have one that where the audience is the mic is listening. The mic is listening. Like but, I said, that's my. But the mic is connected to the audience. <laughs> well, of course. Well, the mic is the audience more yeah. or less half the ninety nine percent of the time, <laughs> right? If you think about it, right? And the mic is just a mechanism, a tool. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the, but the audience, the, the, the people are listening, and whatever you know, whatever it is that you have to say, um, you know, it's valuable. Exactly. Well, look, people, life is too short. I mean, come on. If you want to try something, try it. Want to jump out of a plane? Jump out of a plane, right? Yeah. Just make sure you take the precautions and you educate yourself properly so you don't just jump out of random planes. You're not, you know, at a thousand feet. Like, you, you, you want to be, like, educated, right? right. Um, now, there are those that will jump out at a thousand feet, but that's a different issue altogether. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I, I know people tell me all the time, like, you're always so enthusiastic. And blah, blah, blah. it's like, okay, look, I'm actually naturally high energy. But when I'm not, I'm not. And we all have right. that. Mm -hmm podcasting like I said is the cheapest fastest easiest way to get content out there in social media world that we're in now and you can extrapolate the usage of your podcast in multiple different ways multiple formats and you can rehash the same existing content over and over again do you know how many times someone has to hear a message before it resonates <laughs> right. remember it used to be three times yeah 17 fracking yeah. times yeah. and that's and that's if you're looking for it like no I mean so People will listen. Just have fun. Life is too short. Absolutely. I, I think we can go on and on, but uh, speaking of life being too short, I think our time is probably getting a little short. So, yeah. uh, is there any anything else? So, so you mentioned your podcast. We mentioned Innovation Media. Uh, I have seen uh, and been involved with some of your some of your productions. Uh, they do a great job. Uh, it's, it's wonderful. Thank you. I really appreciate that. And, well, yeah, considering I'm <laughs> doing it as well. But no, really. Hey, you guys is. start, everyone starts somewhere, and I'm actually really impressed. You guys, the last time I came in here, this room is like, I'm not going to lie to you, <laughs> it's so much better. <laughs> it, is, but, it is better. But it, uh, when, I love it. When, when Josh hasn't run off with half the equipment, it's even better. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you other than, um, so, on that note, I'm kidding. I don't know. No, I don't. No, no, no. I, 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 Here's what I love about this, and this, if I may I have those parting words here, because sure. I know we can talk forever, um, is... We'll need wine to talk forever, but yeah. Wow. I don't have a good comeback for that one, because my first answer was yes. But, okay. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> like, nothing witty, just yes? Okay. Uh, here's the joy and love about the world of podcasting, is it is a community, um, if you reach out to other podcasters, 90% of the time, you're going to get love and support. Mm -hmm. Obviously, like any community, there's going to be those that treat it competitively mm -hmm. and those that treat it uh, like a nurturing uh, right. engagement, right? And to me, it I'm of the school of thought that, again, all ships rise with the tide. Mm -hmm. The way we can help each other to grow each other. If you're looking to do a podcast, you don't know where to begin. There's a huge community of people that are willing to help. I'm willing to help answer questions you might have. I'm not going to do it for you for free, <laughs> but I will help you in whatever I can to just inspire you, yeah. et cetera, right? Um, and get on other people's shows. If you're not mm -hmm. ready yet to do your own podcast, and that was one mm -hmm. thing I wanted to, to impart with others. 
if you're thinking about how to build your own personal brand, guest on other people's podcasts. Right. But it is freaking hard to get good guests. And on that note, be a good guest. <laughs> and when I say by good guest, well, I didn't show up on time. So let's just. <laughs> Right. I didn't show up on time, so be a, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> but honestly, uh, be present, mm -hmm. right? Don't be available to go in the flow of the host just because you have a podcast to yourself and maybe you do it a certain way. Um, don't don't bulldoze over your host's podcast, though I did, but I, that's because I talk a lot. <laughs> um, but be giving, right? And like, yeah. be willing to allow them to it make you vulnerable as a guest. Ha, ha, have an opinion, but be vulnerable. Right? Yeah. And, and like, sh share yourself with this, because mm -hmm. I see that all too much. And then also, this is a massive pet peeve. If you're going to be a guest on someone's show, mm -hmm. please cross-promote on your own social mm -hmm. platforms and share your network with what you've done. E on even if you don't guests. think that it's going to make if, an impact. Yeah. Even if you don't think it's going to impact. Um, and... And you know what? Have the honesty. If you don't think the show went well or you don't like it, you know what? Give the feedback to that host because it only improves them. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're saying, I don't like it because I just don't like it, well, that's not feedback. That's <laughs> just you being a prima donna, yeah. right? But if there is a very real reason of like, you know what? When I made this comment here, then then mm -hmm. work together to edit out, edit out what is needed. To me, that's a gracious guest. And then to be a gracious host is, again, to allow your guest to do what they need to do. But mm -hmm. again, it's, it's a give and take. Right. Well, yeah. And if, if you're hosting, if you're hosting a podcast, especially an interview format podcast, or conversational, I like that better. Uh, and somebody doesn't want to talk about something or has said that something's off limits. Respect that. We're going to respect that. <laughs> yeah. That's, totally. I mean, that's, uh, you shouldn't even have to say that. But Well, what's that? Okay. I, I've only, I've only, I've, I've had that happen one time. One time, I mean, not that I've done as many as you have, but the one time that I had somebody talk, say, I, I don't want to, we, that's, we can't talk about that. Oh, yeah. And and it wasn't a big deal. I mean, it was a, it was a big deal for him, but, but you know, not talking about it was not a big deal. It was, we just flew on through it. Right. And, um, you know. Yeah. I mean, it was still a great show. What? A great show, regardless? What? Yeah, no, please, please, guests, please be good guests. That's all. Yeah. Be giving guests, nice guests. <laughs> you know, it's not about you. What is about you? Never mind. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's, it's a little bit about you. It's always about you if you're... It's about me. This is all about me. Just, well, it's, it's about... Not, it's actually not about either of us. It's actually about whoever's listening. It's about you, listeners. That's, yeah. Yeah. I mean, wow. We, we, can, we can launch into this again, but... Uh, I know, corny. But yes. Uh, podcasting... I think is going to make, um, it's already there. There's tons of them out there. There's still plenty of room for more. For sure. Too. For sure. And, and it, it is a unique way for you to have a voice, um, to kind of maybe break the rules a little bit, uh, step outside of your, your normal day to day and, and be heard. Love it. You succinctly summarize that, sir. Say that 15 times now. Succinctly, okay. succinctly summarize that, <laughs> <Yeah>. sir. <laughs> and we didn't even we didn't have drinks today. That's frightening, isn't it? Yeah. Well, thank you, Sia Yasutomi. Thank you, Jonas Bull. You're welcome. And um, I think we already we already talked about the podcast. We already talked about innovation media. Oh, I knew there was one more thing before we go. Uh, Global Leaders Organization, Dallas. Yes. Uh, you're the co-chair. Yes. Um, uh, what is Global Leaders Organization for? No, not the not the whole speech, but, <laughs> but just oh the, my. the quick Wait, I thought we were trying to finish this <laughs> up here. Yeah, so Global Leaders Organization is a business-based organization for fellow entrepreneurs. You are your own business. Uh, that is under, I'd say, like the $5 million annual revenue range. So this is a space for uh, not straight-up startup, but you've matured a little bit, you've got some revenue, and you're looking to accelerate your business, and you're at that threshold of understanding you're not a small business owner, you're an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. and is seeking access to capital a, right. a consideration? If so, how do we help prepare you there? 
Global Leaders Organization is part of that. And then, of course, the community, both online it's and locally. really strong community. Yeah, and, and, and uh, forums. That's going to be a huge, huge, huge thing. So and forums is coming, yes. Yep, so uh, so Global Leaders Organization, if you are not familiar with what forum is, uh, think mastermind, but lifelong relationship mastermind where it goes much more deeper. Now, it's not just talking about your business, but actually you, the business mm -hmm. of you, and then the relationship of giving guidance as asked and required, but really that building that long-term um, yep. Uh, you know, and that's, that's mechanism with glow w i t h g l o dot com. dot com. Yep. All right. And don't forget Afterglow. <laughs> yeah, don't forget to check out Afterglow where we talk about all the cool things that were on the main show. Exactly, and the future host here. I don't know about that. <laughs> Co-host. Okay. I mean, I'm down. Just... I know you are. <laughs> no, 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 no! I love it. No, I, I love it every time you're on. So it's, it's actually probably too much fun, which is probably actually. I'm just thinking, screw it. Let's just forget about having guests. It's just us and just riffing. How much more? <laughs> We're gonna get sued by everyone. Like you can't insult the speakers. Okay. You can't insult the speakers. <laughs> we never insult the speakers. Full disclosure: we are a little rah rah, but uh, there are times when we honestly go, mm, not sure if I believe in that bullet point that they shared. It's, yeah, a, it's always that's constructive. True. That's true. Uh, although I, I will say, I think uh, that what the, you know, the, the Afterglow public base of it, we have done a pretty good job of not having any, not talking bad about anything uh, that wasn't brought up. You know, we're not talking about about anybody behind their back. No, 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 no. Uh, it's always constructive it, it, anyway. It's constructive anyway, but it, but anything that anything that we talk about on there usually has been brought up uh, in the in the uh, VIP room oh. that you have access to as a premium Glow member. We're just advertising the crap out of Glow. <laughs> but you know what? I love the VIP <laughs> session because you know what? Mm -hmm. I've never seen more gracious speakers where it's right. such an intimate right. group that they're like, "Yeah, just hit me up. I'll I'll email you back." And you're like, right. "Wait." And and some of these speakers are. I mean, we have some amazing yeah. speakers that, like, I, that, like, how would you get access to no. some of those guys? No. Uh, ever. Ever. Uh, no, seriously. Yeah. 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 So, like, okay. On that note, after, I'm <laughs> uh, sorry, after, you know what we should do? We should do Afterglow After Dark. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's when that's it really goes down. That's the one with the beer and wine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when it really goes down. Right. Um, yeah, no, thank you so much for having me, and Absolutely. I love what you're doing. I'm so excited, and however I can uh, help support you in any other way, let me know. Okay. Maybe the mic is listening once you get this launched up and going. Okay. So, we, yeah. Are we stop? I don't know. Are we, are we stop? <laughs> uh, we we stop the way we start. We Would just, you just kind of drift away? Yeah, no. I'll, I'll, just, I'll, I'll probably trim some off, but but if it's funny. <laughs>